<clears throat> Ready? All right. <clears throat> So one of my subscribers asked me about this video. He said, Guga, you have to try this. You're, you know, you do everything with, that has to do with dry age. So I'm gonna link the video in the description down below that I'm watching it so that they don't claim this video here. But this is what they claim. You got a fancy steak restaurant. I spent lots of money on that age steak. It will um, dry out, but not dry out so much that it gets- Put the steak on the cheesecloth? It will um, dry out, but not dry out so much that it gets- What? Is this a joke? We're gonna test it. And these are the steaks I'm gonna be using for today's cook. They are two beautiful Australian Wagyu Marbling Score 7, one of my favorite steaks to eat. Once it was removed from the packaging, you can see that the marbling is amazing. That, my friends, is heaven on a steak. Not much to be said, but wow. Going along with the video I saw, I'm gonna be using cheesecloth. The experiment is pretty simple. All you have to do is to wrap it in cheesecloth and put it on your refrigerator and let it dry. And as the video claimed, it will be as good as a dry aged steak. Dry aging takes time. And the fact that this will only be taking a few days, I'm very skeptical. But once it was fully wrapped, all there's left to do is to put it on a cooling rack. That way the air will circulate all the way around. Now, according to the video I saw, all I have to do is put it on my refrigerator and let it sit. There's nothing else to do but wait. Once the time was up, I quickly removed the cheesecloth, took everything out, lay it down on my cutting board, and this is what it looks like. It does, some way, somehow, looks a little bit dry aged. For a better comparison, I'm gonna put a fresh one side by side. And here's what they look like. This is actually looking promising, but there's only one way to find out if it's gonna be good, and that is to taste it. And for that, I kept my seasoning simple with only salt and freshly ground black pepper. I made sure to season both sides, including the edges. To make sure we're really gonna taste the flavor of this beef, I am not using garlic powder. And when I do that, you know it's serious. To go along with our steaks, I also decided to make a very easy side dish. It's called tortilla española. And here's my take on it. I started with large Idaho potatoes. And the first thing we need to do is to peel them. Once that was done, I cut them in fine small cubes. The important thing to remember is to make sure that they're all the same size. That way, everything will cook evenly. On a skillet, you wanna throw in olive oil. Then under medium low heat, throw in your potatoes. Season it with salt, freshly ground black pepper, and cook it until it's nice and tender. On a separate bowl, I cracked five eggs. Using a whisk, I beat them up. Then I threw my potatoes right inside. Mixed everything well until everything was combined. Once that's done, your base is ready. As you can see, my potatoes are extremely tender, and that's how I like it. The next step is very crucial. You have to use a non-stick pan. I first started by coating it with a little bit of olive oil. Make sure all my edges are coated. Then I threw in my mix, followed by mustard cheese and ham. I'm using jamón bierro. It's basically an old-fashioned ham. The only one you want to avoid is the sweet version. To finish it up, throw your mix right on top. It is important to keep it under low heat. You want to slowly cook the eggs. That is the key of finishing it up. When the egg has set, you want to brush some oil on the plate and lay it right on top. Then carefully flip the skillet and as you can see, it was perfectly cooked in one side. To cook the rest, just throw it back in the skillet and let it cook under low heat. Once everything is cooked, all there's left to do is to remove it from the skillet and you are left with a beautiful tortilla española. And that, my friends, tastes amazing. And it will go perfectly with our steaks. Cutting a little piece of it, you can clearly see that it was cooked to perfection. And even though it's only potato, eggs, ham, and cheese, the taste is amazing. And it goes well with our steaks. Talking about steaks, I'm gonna be using my wireless thermometers to make sure I get the exact same temperature. I'm first gonna be putting a beautiful sear on them and then cooking them in indirect heat. I'm shooting for a final internal temperature of 135 degrees Fahrenheit. But now that we have everything ready, I say it is enough talking and it is time to grill some amazing steaks. So let's do it.
All right, everybody, we have our beautiful steaks here. We have our tortilla española. Are you ready to try it? It is my version of a tortilla española, all right, everybody? It might not be 100% authentic, but it's something I love to do. So anyway, it might not be too española. Yeah, it might be something else. It might be gugaliola. <laughs> and there's an animal being annoying today, so if they disturb the video, I apologize. Go for it. Cheers. Mm. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. I can eat it for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and what else? Anytime. Okay, so we have an experiment with our steak. We have A and B. They're slightly different, even though they're nice, beautiful wagyus. I want to know which one you like best. Sounds good? Which one do I go for? Let's go for this one. Ooh, yeah. Wow, super soft. Ooh, tender. Now, let me say this real quick. This steak is their experiment steak. And for whatever reason, it was in the exact same temperature as the other steak. But as you can see, there is less moisture level and it overcooked the edges a lot more. That is kind of interesting for me. So Angel, go for it. Tell me how you like it. Cheers, Cheers. buddy. It's good. It's a nice experiment right here. Yeah, it's a nice steak. It's good. I think I was expecting more. I was expecting something else. I don't know. It's an experiment. I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know you're comparing it to, right? Okay. It's not bad. Let's try the second one, Angel. Let's see this one. Go for it. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I think this one was a little bit more juicy. Um, I agree with you 100%. Is this like a dry aged steak, Angel? Not really. I want to know your honest opinion. I don't think so. Not even close, everybody. What I can tell you is that this steak here has lost more moisture. Does it has a beefier, more concentrated flavor? Not really. I think if you're gonna dry age it, dry age it, man. If you're really thinking about having the dry age experience, you have to dry age it for you, everybody. It's just not the same thing faking it. It's, you can't fake it. <laughs> Plus, there's no funk. There is not that dry aginess flavor. There's, n it's just moisture lost, nothing else. But, uh, Anyway, whoa, <laughs> you gonna take the whole thing? Dude, okay. Anyway guys, I <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one. Before this guy finish the rest I of got, the good wagyu. Look, I got the smaller <laughs> one.